Okay, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Okay, so in this episode, I thought I'd uh, briefly try to say something about what the, the French existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre has to say about freedom and responsibility. Okay, so you ready? Okay, so let me begin with uh, Sartre's lifelong friend, the French existentialist Simone de Beauvoir. So, de Beauvoir says that when we're born, we're essentially thrown into a world of already made values. Values that are imposed upon us from the very start, and which, of course, we just, um, we just naturally conform to. Okay, but we all know what eventually happens, right? At some point, the, uh, the stage set collapses, to borrow a phrase from Albert Camus. That's to say, at some point, usually sometime during early adolescence, we begin to realize that, that our parents aren't the, um, the perfect beings that we thought they were. And so, because of this, we begin to question some of the things that we've been, we've been told and some of the values that we've been taught. We begin to see that, that nothing has been preordained. We start to see that everybody's been making things up as they go along, putting, putting labels on things that can just as easily be taken off. Now, de Beauvoir calls all of this the, the discovery of our own subjectivity. In other words, it's when we begin to recognize our own freedom and therefore our own responsibility for things. Okay, but here's the thing. So this recognition just isn't easy for most of us. No, the reality is that many of us want to remain enclosed in what uh, Sartre called our facticity. That's to say, we want to collapse back into the giveness of our former situation, to that infantile world that we spent so long in. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, because it's easier and it's more comfortable. That's to say, it's easier to reduce ourselves to an object like being that doesn't have to choose and act, but rather just conform and be led around by others. Now, <clears throat> Sartre calls this living in bad faith. De Beauvoir calls this sort of person the subman, and um, Nietzsche's famous term for it is the last man. But whatever the particular designation is, the general meaning is clear. It's when we think of ourselves as determined by our situation. It's when we say to ourselves that we have to, we have to be a certain sort of person or that our role makes us do what we do. It's when we don't want to recognize the, the source of strength inside of us to, to struggle against the external forces of determination. It's when we conform and follow fixed rules and unconditional values rather than make an attempt to understand and interpret those rules and values for ourselves. In Nietzsche's words, this, um, this passive subjection to external rules is to submit to what he calls the, the thou shalt, rather than the uh, I will. But again, the basic point in all of this is that we don't want to deal with our freedom and the magnitude of the responsibility that comes with it. Such a magnitude, in fact, that it can make our freedom feel as Sartre says, overwhelmingly heavy, like a, like a form of condemnation, actually. Okay, but as overwhelming and demanding as it is, the goal for Sartre is not to remain enclosed in our giveness, but instead 
to struggle against the external influences and to have the, the confidence in our own powers and qualities as a human being and to assert ourselves, to, to recognize the power of our freedom. We need to acknowledge then that, that our nature is not fixed like that of a tree or a rock. No, we're creatures with the, the ability to choose and to transcend ourselves and our situation and to decide what we shall become. That is our unique nobility. It's to become a, a self-determining agent. It's to choose humanness over thingness. It's to choose subjectivity over objectivity. It's to choose being a subject over being an object. Now, what part of this means is to, is to not be afraid of or run away from what the German philosopher Karl Jaspers calls boundary situations. That is, moments of discomfort and conflict and suffering. In other words, those crucial times which constitute and demand real choice-making and so the opportunity to become an authentically existing individual. It means not, not losing ourselves in the attrition of status quo living patterns or um, hiding behind the, the anonymity of the masses or taking up the, the role of cogs in a machine or slaves of the technological function. And um, exercising our freedom also means coming to terms with the fact that, that our own choices will often not meet with, with general approval or, or coincide with the, the expectations of others. But here's the thing. I would say that all of this is a small price to pay for actualizing our unfulfilled potential and ultimately the potential of our species. I mean, to embrace the, the fluidity of existence is a liberating thing. Sure, living up to our, our freedom is, um, is a weighty thing. Absolutely. But remember that there can also be immense relief in knowing that however dominant our, our tradition is, or how invasive the, the status quo around us gets, that we don't have to be crushed by it. That things don't have to be that way anymore. That there's an indeterminate potentiality to everything, even to what we think is most immutable. Bye for now.